Hi, I'm Amit Shef, uh, along with Pramod uh, and uh, TK Prasad. Uh, I'm delighted to have this chance to talk to you about K Health. It's our uh, system for proactive, personalized, actionable information for better healthcare. You see, um, for many, many years, uh, doctors used to uh, have, take external observations and um, uh, you know, help identify uh, anything, any disease or any problems that patient was uh, facing. And it was not until 1985 where, when uh, using stethoscope, a doctor was able to get uh, direct information about uh, something related to patients, uh, measure something about a uh, patient, um, get a direct um, reading on something that relates to patient. Suddenly, in the last few years, things have changed significantly. Uh, now we have large amount of devices, sensors that can be within, uh, that can be put within a patient or a person, on a person and around a person that can gather digital signals and uh, help uh, uh, one decide about uh, health related situations. Um, there is a huge and massive growth in so-called Internet of Things. These are the devices, sensors that um, collect the information and, um, uh, and, and convey it over the Internet. And um, uh, there are all kinds of estimates um, uh, that talk about billions of such devices uh, uh, deployed. Today, all kinds of human activities uh, are being captured by these devices and as, as this thing shows and these include um, uh, not just the devices but also activities that uh, the crumbs that uh, human activity puts in the digital space. But uh, one of the most exciting example, one of the most telling example about um, what uh, the digital health, the health has to offer is this example of uh, Professor Larry Smart. Um, Larry is a professor of uh, computer science at UCSD. But he's also uh, a buff of uh, so-called quantified self. So uh, he uh, likes to measure uh, all the activities uh, about um, his health. And uh, people that uh, believe in this quantified self also make this data available for public good. Uh, now Larry, in the case of Larry, he, uh, using all these uh, measurements about his body and uh, its functioning, was able to come to a conclusion that he, uh, uh, you know, is suffering from Crohn's uh, disease and a related disease. Um, and um, this is a disease related to lower digestive tract. The interesting thing here is that it is a um, non-clinician who uses this technology the sensors and other uh, knowledge that he has on the web uh, to come up with health related uh, decision uh, and in this, in this is diagnosis and then Larry goes to um, uh, you know talk to the experts in the field the doctors to figure out the plan to manage um, now think about the implication of this uh, in the case of Larry he's a highly educated person and um, but in future we expect that uh, technology will mature to the stage where even um, uh, a person who uh, has very limited knowledge about health uh, can use these kind of devices to come to a, you know, to, to get help on uh, things related to his health, fitness, well-being. Uh, here's an example. Uh, how do you uh, think about a uh, uh, patient suffering from asthma? And um, uh, you could, asthma is a very complex disease and a lot of things that may need to be measured about asthma. For example, here uh, we show, um, uh, you may have a measurement related to wheezing sound, measurement related to uh, indoor temperature, uh, outdoor temperature, pollen counts outside, indoor dust, all kinds of stuff, right? The, all these things can be measured using a variety of devices. Um, but the amount of data that will be generated by all these devices would be overwhelming for anyone. And this data would be heterogeneous coming from different devices. Typically, this, uh, all this uh, data goes to the uh, applications sold by uh, those uh, device manufacturers. Um, and uh, it will be very hard to uh, really make any sense out of it. What is really needed is uh, uh, to convert all this data into something that is actionable, 
we call this actionable information, something that is meaningful to taking care of your health decisions. Right? So for example, if it is possible for uh, you know, the system uh, to tell you that indeed um, uh, you know, close the windows during the day to avoid carbon monoxide in gush so that uh, you would have uh, uh, a lesser chance of uh, having asthma at night. This will be highly meaningful, this is actionable, this is something that matters for human uh, decision making. I call that computing for human experience, improving computing for, uh, uh, using computing for improving human experience. Um, so essentially what you want is not the data but actionable information. So we have developed this K-Health uh, system, uh, the, uh, it's, uh, it's, it stands for Knowledge Enabled Healthcare. Uh, and um, we have four current uh, use cases for the K-Health technology. Uh, the first has been uh, ADHF, uh, uh, reducing the admission of um, uh, people suffering from acute decomposite heart failure, uh, people who are discharged from hospital. Um, uh, the second one is asthma in children. The third is uh, patients um, uh, who had had GI surgery. And the fourth is uh, patients um, with dementia. Uh, so uh, there is a brief video uh, that uh, gives um, a, an information about um, uh, this thing. Let's see if we can get. And uh, the idea here is that how can technology assist in addressing some of the health challenges? My name is Amit Shed. I am a professor of computer science and engineering at Nexus Nexus Ohio Women's Scholar at Dyson University. The knowledge enable techniques and particularly what we call semantic web techniques. Uh, so NOISIS probably is the largest academic group in the United States in semantic web research. So these techniques, semantic techniques enabled by background knowledge and other traditional techniques like machine learning and NLP and SO image processing, they are playing a very important role in being able to make sense out of all that data being created. Among the things that we noticed we could do well and uniquely is to use low cost sensors computations on the mobile phone and making the health related decisions for example how much risk you have for the onset of a disease right on the mobile phone everything is done within the control of the patient so you avoid the privacy and security issues that come with the health data uh, we are working with uh, Dr. Shalini Forvis uh, who is a pediatrician but an expert also in children's asthma so she is, uh, she is giving us the medical knowledge and we have developed this application that runs on mobile phone that uses a whole bunch of sensors um, as well as uh, some of the data on the web. For example, what is the pollen today, what is the smog level today, in-house humidity and temperature, uh, patient's own situation like wheezing. All these are collected and then uh, the system automatically analyzes these things and uh, tries to warn if the chances of uh, asthma has increased. So we are talking about data to information to meaning, and we get to the meaning. So um, the idea is basically uh, to uh, uh, use a mobile phone to collect all this kind of data and uh, run an intelligent uh, software uh, on this mobile phone uh, to convert all the data into actionable information. So K-Health is a knowledge-based approach uh, or application for patient-centric healthcare that exploits web-based tools and social media, uh, mobile phone technology and wireless sensors, and it synthesizes personalized actions from all those heterogeneous health-related data. It can be for disease prevention and treatment, it can be for health, fitness and well-being. Uh, uh, an example of uh, K-Health uh, deployment for ADHF is shown here, where you have heart rate monitor, you have blood pressure, you have uh, scale. Uh, all these uh, use Bluetooth to connect to um, the mobile phone and the application running on mobile phone, which then use intelligent processing of this data to uh, reduce, uh, to help reduce the readmission of uh, uh, ADHF patients. Or similarly for, um, this is a kit that we have for asthma, where uh, you have this nit nitrous oxide you saw and uh, other things that you saw in the video. So um, the point here is that you have huge amount of potential health data and um, 
uh, and you want to really uh, uh, make decisions from that. Uh, the architecture of system basically looks like this. You have a whole variety of data, you have the devices, you have the software and infrastructure for analysis and that leads to uh, actions that are very relevant to this making decisions uh, that is uh, totally relevant to the context of uh, that particular patient, highly personalized. So, um, uh, among the things that we do uh, is um, not only collect the data and integrate the data, but uh, we um, uh, have uh, the, the core, the secret source really, uh, relates to what we call semantic perception. So it is reasoning for decision making and action generation. Right? Um, and um, yeah, we, saw some, we gave you some examples of the actions that you might take if you are an asthma patient. And um, one key uh, enabler for the semantic perception is the uh, use of domain specific knowledge. So for example, uh, this is the protocol that the doctors use uh, uh, to manage asthma in a patient. And it has two aspects, asthma control level and a severity level of asthma. So if you have um, not asthma that is not well controlled and might persist in asthma, then you would give that patient medium uh, inhaled cortico, uh, corticosteroid. This knowledge uh, essentially is used to uh, uh, you know, develop the ontology uh, that semantic perception uses. And the point then is that uh, at the end of the, uh, you know, all this processing, what you want is to know how control is my asthma or how vulnerable is my control level today. So for example, if there is a significant increase in pollen count outside and you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, vulnerable to the increased pollen count, then you want the system to uh, give you the information that you are vulnerable to this higher pollen count. From a processing perspective then, what happens is that you collect all the data. The data is in all heterogeneous form and they arrive at different points of time. The important thing is to convert all the data into somewhat of a uniform form and uh, uh, there are a lot of applications that do semantic annotation. So here you are doing health signal extraction which means that you are annotating this data with regards to the medical concepts. These are the concepts that are described in the ontology with, uh, you, you, and the background knowledge with the help of expert guidance. Right? And when all that uh, annotation is done and then you do computation on it, then you get uh, the actionable information. Semantic uh, web technologies are critical in developing these kind of solutions. So we used uh, W3C's uh, semantic sensor networking framework uh, that um, uh, 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 we were heavily involved in. Uh, there is a, here's a detailed example uh, or, or rather a diagram of uh, the SSN ontology. I won't describe it in detail. Now, uh, while the ontology allows you to uh, describe um, uh, the health related data, in the, our case health related data, into certain uniform form and describe the annotations, uh, create the annotation of the data, what really needs to be done is to convert this massive number of data into few actionable information, right? So you want to, uh, even though the data may grow very fast, um, you want to uh, human capacity to um, think and, uh, and decide uh, and take action is not growing any faster. Our brain capacity is not growing any faster. So we need to convert things into the data. For example, 150, which is a raw text, um, and uh, into uh, and then this label data, systolic blood pressure. Uh, at that uh, you know level, uh, to a um, you know interpreted data uh, that is elevated blood pressure. Now these things can be all described with the SSN ontology and using the semantic web standards into uh, something that is interpreted and actionable. For example, the doctors would not uh, decide on uh, what medication to use based on elevated blood pressure. They would decide on the identification of the disease and disease related conditions and parameters. So you need to make this particular thing and for that we have developed this core infrastructure we call uh, and computational framework we call IntelliGo. IntelliGo uh, stands for uh, you know is for making sense out of sensor data and it is fundamentally based on a perception, a human perception. So there is extensive work in cognitive science uh, and people have developed a cognitive models so we kind of took uh, um, uh, uh, we, we took uh, um, general idea from that, not anything specific in terms of technology, 
uh, but we took inspiration from uh, the work in cognitive science and that led to development uh, of this uh, semantic perception. So, and the work was done by Corey Hansen, a former PhD student of mine. Uh, so, semantic perception in K health involves abductive reasons, a reasoning which to, to derive the candidate explanation for the data that we have collected, and relative reasoning to distribute among the multiple explanations uh, with patient inputs and additional target sensor observations. And that is the intellectual. So in the uh, in intellego, um, uh, in the perception cycle, there are two parts as I mentioned. The first part is the ablative part of the cycle, uh, which uh, gives you explanation or helps you build a, a hypothesis. And the second part is the deductive part, which uh, discriminates to find you know particular potential answer uh, to the hypothesis or to get more further information that helps you evaluate the hypothesis. So. But, in, uh, but the important thing for making this cycle work and the core uh, you know, innovation is the use of prior knowledge or background knowledge with regards to that. So disease specific ontology, for example, is very critical for this cycle to work uh, in, in, and for us to be able to personalize uh, and contextualize the processing. Now, for example, here I show uh, that how we can use, uh, represent some of the concepts and the facts using the SSN ontology. So here you are describing that elevated blood pressure is a property of hypothyroidism. And then you can describe that knowledge as a graph. Uh, similarly, you can describe other domains also. And then you uh, have a, uh, you know, in the reasoning process you have uh, explanation, uh, you have discrimination, and uh, you know, for example here, uh, based on the elevated blood pressure, it could be any one of these things, but when you get clemmy skin, um, then you can discriminate and say it is likely because of uh, hypothyroidism. So the system looks for the relevant uh, 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 sensor data, data from relevant sensors to discriminate and to come up uh, with understanding of the health related situation. Uh, semantic perception uh, basically what it does is to uh, map low level sensor values to coarse grain abstract values, for example something like this to high BP and it extracts signals from high level human comprehensive features from low level sensor data for example in the case of parkinson's disease to help you identify uh, your unsteady walk uh, potential for fall uh, slurred speech and things of that nature uh, by analysis of uh, signals um, uh, now uh, when we try to build this solution using our based reasoner it quickly blew up because of the high complexity of processing uh, and especially when you try to do that on mobile phone, you just don't have a lot of resources. So uh, you can send that data on the cloud computing. We didn't want to do that because we want to keep all the processing local and under the control of uh, the patient. Uh, and patient can decide whether he or she wants to send the data or not. So for that, we develop what we call what we call intelligence at edge. In this particular case, we are able to downscale, downscale the semantic processing on each of the devices, right? And um, for that, we develop a uh, uh, bit vector based, uh, uh, you know, processing, uh, uh, you know, bit vector uh, based encoding and op their operators. Uh, we had a paper in ISRC 2012 that describes that in detail, and it allowed us to go from, um, you know, a system that would have a algorithm that would have um, polynomial, uh, you know, uh, that would have high high complexity to polynomial uh, to a linear time frame or something that took us minutes to into milliseconds and something that took us, you know, that could only process tens of nodes into thousands of nodes, right? So uh, fundamentally then, we are able to uh, do three things. We are able to translate low level data into high level knowledge. We are, uh, prior, use of prior knowledge was key to the core of this computational paradigm uh, we call semantic perception and that we are able to uh, do this computation uh, on mobile phone. So we had a combination of D-Health M health, uh, all in the context of knowledge based processing, we call uh, K health. Thank you.